How is it hanging YouTube? Peter here, your Ginger Jory Geek, back for another Doctor Who review. So this is the third of the anniversary specials entitled The Giggle. This one got us quite excited and we'll get into it in a second. Before we start, please do hit that like and subscribe and all that jazz. This stars David Tennant and Catherine Tate once again, but oh my god, Neil Patrick Harris is in this and this man is phenomenal. He plays a character that appeared in the first iteration of Doctor Who many, many moons ago, the Toymaker. Now I'm going to talk about his performance in a little bit because it's phenomenal. Basis of the story is he's implanted an image in the start of television and it's driving everybody bloody nuts because it's on every TV or screen known to man. It basically makes everybody believe they are right. Now this is a really interesting social commentary for me because I think this is really reflective of the age we live in. Everybody's opinion is the prime opinion, which is weird. But anyway, it really does cover that beautifully. The Doctor then bumps into Neil Patrick Harris's character. Now, I used to like Neil Patrick Harris, but now I friggin' love the man. He is just breathtaking in this. We get reintroduced to Unit. Every time we see Unit, they seem to have gone through some kind of massive upgrade. These guys are basically the military now, and they live in Avengers Tower. You know what's going on there? And they've got to keep laser cannons attached. Anyway, we'll catch up with some old characters, some old favourites, which was really nice to see. But this took us completely by surprise. I wasn't expecting to see this one back. So that was really, really nice. And I was pleased to see she took part um, in a, a few of the key kind of elements of the episode. I loved this exchange about being a first ginger, which was just tremendous. The Doctor then does his thing. And as usual, we end up with some stunning emotional outbursts from David Tennant. There is an adorable scene where they're really kind of explaining a little bit about what's gone on with him over the last few years and basically he's a guy going through post-traumatic stress disorder we'll then get his first introduction and meeting again with the toy um, maker who is just phenomenal now i just want to talk a little bit about neil patrick harris you will have gathered from the start of this video i am absolutely in awe of his performance the voices he does in this are just superb i love the different accents i love the way he switches between i think three to four different characters it's just absolutely brilliant he's menacing at times and he's fun at times he's just superb and i can't talk about this without talking a little bit about this which was amazing Simply brilliant, but I can't help think it reminded us an awful lot of this guy as well. I think it's fair to say that the Toy Maker had an awful lot in common with Q from Star Trek TNG. Omnipotent beings who like to play and carry on with people and have got a flair for the dramatic, as we can see in this scene. Now, Toy Maker, I think, was a superb villain. He had just the right edge of zaniness and madness, but also some real good depth to him. This show really covered some strong emotions some quite dark scenes this was amazing with the david tennant and um, puppet but it was quite creepy at times so i really enjoyed that i like my doctor who where it's a little bit dark we then of course get oh the regeneration we we'll get the toy maker threatening some of the doctor's pals and then we get this incredible sfx scene of the doctor being shot through the uh, the, the chest there Really impressive, really nice. We knew this was coming, but I was gutted. I have to say, I, I want David to stick around. I love David Tennant. I love the character. So it was a bit of a, a sad, expected outcome that he was going to regenerate. But spoilers ahead, so turn away now. Holy shit balls! What the holy feck happened here? We get something called a bi-generation. A bi generation. And what this basically means is instead of being replaced, he splits in two. And we'll get our first view of our new doctor, who's incredibly sexy, by the way, and is going to be tremendous. But the literally split in two, giving us a whole host of possibilities for the future. And we're going to touch on that at the end. But we've now, in essence, got two Doctor Who's. 
it goes even further than that. By the end of the episode, we've got two Tauruses as well. So there is a whole host of opportunities here for the Hoovers to expand with multiple Doctors flying around. I really want them to dig deep and I want to see another Torchwood series come out of this. Anyway, the episode concludes. I have to say, I'm not a big fan of it. The kind of the play catch, which was a bit cack. Like this scene, but the bad guy gets beaten. We end the episode with the two Doctors discussing all of the trauma that David Tennant and the character has gone through over the last few years. The guy's been through the bloody ringer. And he, in essence, retires to Earth. Now, some people won't like this, but I absolutely loved it. This scene was beautiful. And when David looks here and just says he's never been happier, there was a tear in my eye. I thought it was stunning. But that leads us to future adventures. The new Doctor here. The new trailer's out. It looks interesting. Very, very different take on Doctor Who. I can't wait to get into it. But I must say, the thought of having an additional David Tennant Doctor Who series really floats my boat. All in all, this was a great episode. Best of the three. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. Okay, ladies and gents, thank you for watching. Please do hit that like and subscribe. Remember, any money made on this channel goes to mental health charities. That's your whack. Let us know in the comments what you thought. And I'll catch you next time.